In our last Project Street Sleeper video, we installed some simple but important fuel and air mods, like an upgraded fuel pump, injectors, a boost controller and gauge, and a more modern mass airflow sensor. Now we're looking to maximize our pump gas performance by installing a methanol injection system. Many of you know that I'm a big fan of water, alcohol, and methanol injection. I first learned about it in the early 90s, but hot rodders have been running water and alcohol injection for a long time. Water injection was even used in pre-World War II aircraft in order to increase takeoff power and to increase speed during dogfights. How about that? In the last 10 years or so, advancements in pump designs, progressive controllers, tanks, and other components have made alcohol injection more mainstream and a fairly common choice for folks who own turbo or supercharged vehicles and want the most performance out of their pump gas. Here's how it works. A reservoir installed in your car will hold water or a mixture of water and alcohol or water and methanol. Connected to the reservoir is a pump. When a pressure switch connected to your engine sees a certain amount of boost, the switch activates the pump. The pump then sucks the water and alcohol mixture from the reservoir and injects it into the engine's airstream via a spray nozzle attached before the throttle body. It sprays a fine mist, far too fine to hydrolock an engine. The net result is cooler intake charges and a drastic reduction in knock and detonation. There is also a steam cleaning effect for your cylinder head and valves. The reduction in knock or detonation means that you'll be able to run more boost, timing, and get far better and more consistent performance from pump gas. Also, I have a very simple but tried and true DIY setup on my website. I also have some helpful videos on there that do a great job of explaining how alcohol injection works. While you're there, check out my fine assortment of men's pants. Alright, let's get to work installing it on the Galant. To keep our system hidden away, I chose this trunk mount kit from Cooling Mist. It's a well-designed setup that nestles their high-pressure pump within a 1.5 gallon tank. Mounted to the pump and tank assembly is this adjustable boost switch that turns the system on when you reach the set boost level. Wiring is self-contained too, and only a power and ground is needed. At the outlet of the pump is a mechanical check valve. This keeps the water and alcohol mixture from being sucked into the engine under vacuum and holds pressure in the line to ensure a fast, consistent alcohol supply. Also included is this nylon hose that has a burst pressure of over 1000 psi. One length of hose is used to send the mixture from the pump to your engine and the other length is used to send a vacuum boost reference signal back to the activation switch. To update my kit, I ordered Cooling Mist's newer super atomizing injector in the size that should be perfect for my needs. They offer all different sizes for different engines and power levels. Now this is an older unit that I originally used in my old Turbo Miata. Cooling Mist has improved some of the components like the pump and a few other items, but this setup worked excellent in that car, allowing it to make over 250 rear wheel horsepower on pump gas with a completely stock engine and conservative tune. This was a car that made just a little over 100 horsepower to the wheels in stock form. This kit was a key component in making that power and doing so reliably. Our first step to install this kit is to find a good spot in the trunk for the tank and pump assembly. I chose the driver's side rear as the floor shape was good back there and it was an efficient spot for the wiring and lines. So after removing the trunk carpeting and liners, I found a good power wire that was triggered off of the ignition and a spot for my ground wire. To make it easy to remove the setup if needed, I used this old heavy duty wiring connector that I had lying around. I made sure to solder my connections and use heat shrink tubing to protect everything. With the wiring done, it was time to run the boost and alcohol lines. I chose the spot in the trunk because there's an access hole close by that is well away from any heat sources. Since you can't leave the lines hanging out like this, I took a look at the rubber plug that was previously in the hole and found a close match in size. This is an old DSM rubber shift bushing. 
I never throw stuff like this away as they can come in handy later on. I popped my new rubber plug in and ran my alcohol and boost lines through it and up into the trunk area. Next I grabbed the remaining line and ran it all under the car. Once I decided on a good route, I covered them in some loom for protection and secured the lines with insulated clamps and zip ties. With that part of the job done, it was time to install our injector nozzle. Here's a close look at it with the 90 degree elbow and adapter fitting that allows the nylon hose to plug into it. Now it's time to figure out where to install it. Installation options are endless, but I like to mount my nozzle above my tank's water line and close to the throttle body, so I chose the throttle body elbow. The fitting requires tapping a 10 mm by 1.25 threaded hole, so I grabbed my tap and 11 30 seconds drill bit and got to it. Using some thread tape, the nozzle bolts in nice and snug. Here's the nozzle assembly installed and ready to go. Next I bolted the throttle body elbow and turbo piping back on. Now it was time to run the boost signal to the tank switch. I spliced into a vacuum and boost line and we'll connect that to the appropriate nylon line that runs to the switch in the trunk. After replacing the trunk lining and carpet, I installed the setup one last time. So here it is with the electrical connector, boost and alcohol lines connected. There's definitely some added complexity when installing a system in your trunk, but it fits our sleeper needs perfectly and keeps the engine bay looking stock. Plus, you get a nice big tank that's easy to fill back here. After double and triple checking all of my work, it was time to top off the tank and test it out. I'm using this boost juice, which is simply a 50-50 mix of distilled water and methanol. With the activation switch set to the desired boost level, I triggered the system to confirm that everything was working properly and to flush out any junk out of the alcohol line. Now I connect my alcohol line to the nozzle and give it a quick test. Nice! Thank you as always for watching. In our next video, we tackle a few much needed suspension mods. So with that said, thanks again folks, we'll see you next time. I also want to thank ECM Tuning, Detective Coding, and Forced Performance for supporting Tom's Turbo Garage. Please check them out as they not only do great work, they're great people too.